As followers of Jesus, we have parts of our lifestyle that are cultural or optional. We call these traditions. We also have parts of our lifestyle that are not optional, that are a part of what it means to follow Jesus, and Jesus calls these his commands. In this video, we're going to look at a simple tool that helps you to begin to process through the difference between the two and why that's important. That is coming up. Hey guys, my name's Mark. Please subscribe to our channel so you get this content right there in your inbox and you don't miss a video. So as Christianity has been around for many, many years now, we begin to find ways to engage with it in our culture, in our generation. And so we call this traditions. And traditions are not bad in and of themselves, but they do sometimes become elevated to the same status as the commands of Jesus. And Jesus addresses this idea found in Mark chapter 7. I'm just going to read part of the passage to you. It says, The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands ceremonial washing, holding to the traditions of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So we're getting set up for this clash between tradition and something else. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of commands of God and are holding to the traditions of men. So what's going on here? So the Pharisees come and they get into Jesus' space, which first of all, that's a good point. Jesus didn't go to them to tell them what they should be doing, but they got all up in his business and began to ask him questions. So he addresses it when it comes to him. And they begin to ask him about why are your disciples not washing their hands before they eat. So first of all, that's gross. Like they should be washing their hands, right? It's gross to not wash your hands before you're eating. The point that Jesus is making here is that they are elevating their traditions, their cultural ways of putting into practice the law and the commands of God to the level of the Bible. So they put the traditions of man at the same level as the Bible. And what Jesus goes on to identify here is that at times, the traditions then begin to nullify or cancel out the heart behind the law and the commands of God themselves. So we begin to have this cultural way of practicing faith that doesn't actually empower us to walk out the commands of God. It is not at all bad to have traditions, but their role is to facilitate us walking into living out the commands of God. It's absolutely essential that these traditions be a platform or a springboard into walking out God's commands. So now on to the tool. This tool helps us to deconstruct the places in our lives, in our culture as Christians, where we have built traditions that are no longer facilitating us living out the commands of Christ. So take a piece of paper and draw two columns. In the first column, write the word commands. And in the second column, write the word traditions. Now, commands here are not optional. We cannot choose whether we live out the commands of Christ. Traditions, on the other hand, are optional and oftentimes cultural. And by optional, I don't mean that they're bad or that this whole column is going to be bad things or that we get into a critical spirit here, but instead examining, are these things actually empowering us to live out the commands of Christ? So now let's begin to fill out our sheet. Put on that left-hand column commands that you know that Christ has commanded us to do. You might think of repent and be baptized. You might think of that, that Christ has commanded us whenever we gather to take communion as we remember his name. You might remember that, that he called us to this great commandment, and that's what we oftentimes leave out, so I left space at the top of the list, which is the call to love God and to love our neighbor. These are the greatest commandments that we're called to keep. So we can also begin to fill in some of the traditions that we work out and do as Christians that may or may not be facilitating us living out those commands. I may even be getting in the way of that being released to a multiplying discipleship call. And that might include loving people only at church or baptizing people only at church where only the pastor can baptize or taking communion, but only doing that on a Sunday when we gather. So take some time now and begin to fill out your list. Fill out some things that you see in scripture as commands. You can even look up 
Uh, there's a lot of websites you can look to that will tell you what the commands of Christ you can find in the New Testament are. Begin to fill out that list and begin to fill out your list of traditions as well. As you think on what it looks like to gather as believers, write down all the different components that we have. Now, finally, to finish out using this tool, take some time with this and begin to look over the list of commands that you have and begin to ask God, which of these am I not practicing in my life that you are calling me to put into practice right now? And then begin to look over this list of traditions and begin to process the same thing. Which of these traditions are actually helping to springboard me, my family, those that I'm practicing my life with into living out the commands of Christ. And if they're getting in the way, what needs to change? Now, you may or may not be in the position in your church community to make those changes, but God's going to begin to speak to you. What do you need to do to begin to, on your end of things, begin to live out traditions in your lifestyle that can facilitate you in putting into practice the commands of Christ? Christ promised us through his own interaction with his disciples when he met with them in the upper room that the Holy Spirit would come and that he and his father would make his, their home in us and they would fellowship or draw near to us as we obeyed his commands. It's absolutely essential and it's core to what it means to be a follower of Jesus to put into practice the commands of Christ and to teach others to do so. Hope this is a helpful tool and I will see you guys next time.